Hey, welcome back to the Lisa Nichols Show. I am so excited about our conversations that we have here. Courageous conversations, sometimes disruptive, sometimes carefrontational, not confrontational, but carefrontational. This is the place where we come to hear the real deal. You know, the question that people have asked me is, how do I bounce back? when I have a life interruption, meaning I have my plan, I put A, B, C, one, two, three, and then oops, my relationship went south. Oh my God, I lost a loved one. My job, the career I thought I'd have for a while, all of a sudden it ended, or a health challenge. I didn't see that diagnosis coming. I didn't see the illness coming. What happens when I'm on my path, I'm on my plan, and then life happens, an interruption happens? Lisa, how do I bounce back? That's been the question that I've gotten for years. So I thought, let's dive in and let's figure out what do we do? What do we do when that occurs? So I always teach from my experiences. And so I have to, I would be remiss if I didn't start off by saying, I love my son, Jelani but I didn't expect when I got pregnant. Beautiful surprise, but in the moment, I was scared. I was right at 28, 29, ready to go. Eight months after he was born, I'm ready to lock down, load, and make it work with his father, even if not in a relationship, co-parenting, only to get the phone call, Lisa, I'm in jail. And there, um, for the next 20 years, that's where he was. I remember getting off stage and feeling tired and going to the doctor only to realize that I had some severe hormonal challenges requiring me to get six blood transfusions over the next three years while I build my career. I'm only sharing this with you to share with you all my interruptions that I didn't see coming. Not to mention my body began to transform. I didn't know it was connected to some some uh, health conditions that I was unaware of, but my body began to transform from the age of 28 to the age of 38, and I gained over 80 pounds. Interruptions, unwelcomed interruptions. I did not see you coming. I did not want you in my life, and yet it occurs. So let me give you some of the insight of what I did. Number one, <clears throat> <laughs> Let me just say this. Let me also give you some insight based on what I didn't do that I wished I had done had I known then what I know now. Because I'm your sister in the journey and the goal is to help you bounce back sooner, quicker, faster and to help you stay and get to that goal um, and navigate life's terrain. And so number one, how do you overcome disruptions? How do you bounce back from disruptions? Number one, I want you to take very clear heed to how the disruption happened, how the interruption happened. Now, in some cases, you are just in you 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 are a part of the puzzle and you didn't include you didn't you didn't influence the outcome at all. But in other cases, you did influence it. This is not a make wrong assessment. This is not keeping score. This is keeping track. The way that I've grown my life is I stop keeping score. I stop beating up on Lisa for how I got here. And I start keeping track on the behaviors that got me here, the behaviors that navigated this path and the behaviors that will get me out. So number one, if it's an interruption, navigate how the interruption occurred. In some cases, it's just a matter of being and existing. Note that in other cases, it's a matter of co-creating the experience. Note that as well. Hard pill to swallow, grown folk conversation, but necessary because that helps behavior modification if needed. So number one, take note. Take note, look at it. Whether it's the way you eat, the way your diet, whether it's your health, whether it's the way you communicate, whether it's whatever. How did the interruption occur? Number two, really important, is to see yourself beyond this interruption. Most people, when an interruption happens, we're in reaction. Write that down. We're in reaction. You want to move from reaction to response. Move from reacting to responding. Now, one of the number one ways you move from reacting to responding is you stop only looking down at the issue. When a crisis occurs, you're, it's, it's very normal for us to look down at the issue, put all of our energy there. 
And I'm going to invite you to raise your chin up, see the other side of this interruption. What will it look like on the other side of this interruption? You need to have something pulling you beyond the moment, beyond the crisis, beyond the issue. And you got to get very clear on that. Now, if you're very detailed like me and some of my advanced students, put a date on it. Put a realistic date on it, though. Don't put a date that's going to stress you. Put a date that's going to stretch you and keep you in action. So that's number two. Number one, analyze what got us here. Number two, see the end result. Go back to the end result in spite of the interruption. See it clearly. You might have to change the date. You might, might have to change directions. You might have to change the partner, which you might get there with. Not sure. But the goal is in mold. The plan stays in sand. The goal is in mold, but the plan can stay in sand. And number three, number three, get a high conscious, write this down, get a high conscious accountability community. Get a high conscious accountability community that you can, now this community can be a community of two. I always say it needs to be more than one person. It can be a community of two up to nine. More than nine is too many people. Whether you meet formally every two weeks on the phone or whether you meet informally, um, get a, an accountability community uh, that's going to keep you moving. So in that community, you identify the interruption. Now, the reason why I say a high conscious community is because you want to get someone who's going to help you see beyond this circumstance to the man, the woman you are in spite of this interruption. You don't want to pour in, pour your interruption, pour the incident into a, 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 a low conscious thinker. And I'm not speaking negatively of anyone, but a low conscious thinker is going to grow the issue, grow the drama, grow the impact, grow the energy of despair, resentment, anger, shame, or blame. A high conscious thinker, which is why this is important in my number one, two, and three, a high conscious thinker is going to say, this is true. You're right, it's happening. Let's get you through this. And where are we going again? How are we going to get there? What's our timeline we're going to get there in? They're going to keep you running. And on the days when you feel you can't run or you can't walk, you take your high conscious community tribe of gladiators, change agents, and unicorns. You lift up your arms like this. You ask them to loop their arms into yours and ask that they carry you on those days. And I know personally that they will. The road that I've taken and the miles that I've walked on some days, my legs weren't the ones moving. It was my gladiator tribe. It was my community. It was my accountability circle of my greatness. They carried me until I can catch my breath and start my feet again. Remember, this show is not just a monologue. It's not just me talking to you. This really is at this time more than ever, at this time more than ever, this particular community is a community of dialogue. I love to hear from you. What are you thinking? What interruptions are you climbing through? Are you climbing over? Did you forget about the goal because the interruptions have been so big? Did you lose, this, did you lose your heart and your passion for the goal, for the intention because the interruption just consumed all of your energy? And now... We're getting back on track. See, energy grows where energy goes. Don't give the interruption the energy. Give the intention the energy. And the intention will carry you through the interruption. What's the biggest aha that you got here today? What did you get from this episode? I want to hear from you. Please leave me your statements, your heart, your shares below. Let me know that we're in this at the same pace, same time, on the same path. After all, this is your home and we are your tribe. And I am your sister in prosperity. And every single time, the years prior to now, every single video you've seen me say, I believe in you and I love you. It's not for lack of anything to say. It's not to keep the same shit going. It's because in a beautiful agape love kind of way, that's that divinity love that transcends all boundaries, cultural boundaries, religious boundaries, economic status, geographical location. There's no boundary between you and I. When I say I believe in you and I love you, it's because I do. I can't wait to see you again real soon.